Hey, do you want to be the fastest blenderer on the planet? Let me show you how. I'm sure I don't have to convince you, but if you want to be fast in Blender, you have to learn the shortcut keys. And it's a pain because there's like a billion of them, right? Um, so I try and incorporate them into my tutorials, but the problem is that, you know, I don't necessarily have time to kind of go into depth about, you know, what a certain key does or, you know, even where it is in the keyboard, like a backtick key, for instance. So I'm going to show you uh, 10 shortcuts that are really useful. Some of them you might not have heard of. Some of them are new for Blender 2.80. So sit back, relax, grab a coffee and let's get started. First up is F9. You may have noticed when you create a new object, you'll get this little panel down here in the lower left hand corner. And then you can do things like, if we zoom in here, we can see it. You can adjust your segments and all these kind of different settings for your new object. That's all good, but problem number one is it's kind of hidden away down in the corner here. And problem number two is if you click off your object accidentally, then the panel's gone and you can't get it back. So that's all a bit of a pain, but F9 to the rescue. So if we create a new mesh, if we push F9, we get those same settings, but rather than they're being like down in the lower right hand corner, they're right here underneath our mouse. And another thing you may have noticed here is that I can just click off this object, move around, select it again, you know, do whatever I want, and then I can just push F9 again, and those same settings are back, and they're still linked up to this particular object. You may remember in ugly old Blender, we had to change views like orthographic views and stuff like that using the number pad. So that meant that if you had your hand on the left hand side of the keyboard where things like translate and rotate and other handy functions are edit mode, you had to take your hand all the way from the left hand side of the keyboard all the way over here to the right to the number pad to be able to change like to a left view or a front view and so on. In pretty new Blender, we have this key called either the backtick or accent grave key. Now, if you push it, you get this pie menu here. From here, you can do things like pick the top view, pick the left view, and you don't have to wait for the menu to show up either. Like any other pie menu, you can just drag, use the key, drag in that direction, and you can get really fast at kind of changing views like this. One thing I didn't realize is this key is not necessarily on all different keyboards. On my keyboard, which is a US based keyboard. Um, it's up here in the top left of the keyboard near the number one and the escape. A really good position for it, right? Because that's where your hand kind of sits most of the time. If it's not here on your keyboard or you want to see what key it might actually be assigned to, what you can do is you can go into edit preferences and then find your key map settings here and you have to dig a little bit for it but it's in here 3D view, 3D view global and then you're gonna scroll down here and it's just simply called view, it's this one here. You'll be able to check this here and see what key it's attached to, maybe assign your own key because this pie menu is super handy. But if you don't wanna do all that, the next key you can try is using the alt, holding down the alt key and then just dragging with your middle mouse button or scroll wheel button. And this way it's kind of like you drag your view around to the next orthographic view. So you wanna see the, the right hand side of the monkey here, this, this side here, you drag, you hold down Alt and you drag to the right and there you go. And you wanna drag back to the front, you go back to the front like that. One thing I love about Blender is its selection system is based on being able to select what you can see. So for instance, here we have, we're in edit mode. Um, if you box select over the monkey like this, you'll only pick the vertices that you can you know, see. You won't pick these ones here that were occluded. You won't pick these ones here on the back. This is all well and good, but what if you do want to pick the stuff that's on the back? Well, there's a couple of ways to do it. Um, you either want to switch into wireframe view or you want to switch into x-ray view, which is your solid view with an x-ray mode. And you can do this by using these buttons up here, right? So you've got, here's your wireframe mode, here's your x-ray mode. But of course, this is about hotkeys, right? So what's the hotkey? Well, there's a bunch here that I'll kind of lump into one category. Uh, they're all based off the Z key. So if you push Z by itself, you'll get this pie menu. And it works like the other backtick one where you can just go rendered mode, wireframe mode, solid mode, and so on. It takes a bit of getting used to, but if you just want a key to switch between, you know, wireframe or X-ray mode, I've got you covered. What we've got here is Shift Z will take you into wireframe mode. 
And so then you can see, you know, you can pick all the way through. You can also toggle X-ray mode on and off with Alt-Z. So Alt-Z for X-ray, Shift-Z for wireframe. This next one is for all you tablet users. You might have seen people, uh, what they'll do is go into Control r to add an edge loop, and then they'll use the mouse wheel to add more than one edge loop. But what if you like don't have a mouse wheel? Uh, the solution for that is page up and page down. So to demo that, let's go into edge mode. We'll push Control r and you can see we can pick uh, an edge loop to add. But if we want to add more than one, we'd use page up and page down, just like you would the mouse wheel. Now, our next key is a very handy one. It's control space. And what this does is any view that your mouse is over, you can press control space and it will make it full screen. So say you want to play back your animation full screen, you can have a look at it like this, or say you want to work on a big complicated node graph a bit easier, you can just make it full screen like this and do whatever you want. And speaking of nodes, before you do anything else, like I want you to do this right now, go into your edit preferences, get into the add-on section here, search for node and enable node wrangler. Now this adds a whole bunch of new shortcuts and you might be rolling your eyes at this point, but trust me, they're super handy and will save you so much time. First one we're gonna look at is control T. Now say you have your some texture map here, right? There's like two nodes you have to create uh, in order to control like your tiling and being able to offset the texture and all that kind of stuff. I can never remember what they are because I don't have to. All you have to do is with Node Wrangler add-on enabled, select your texture, hit Control T and there they are. So this is like one of my favorites. Another Node Wrangler favorite is Control X. You might have had some nodes and if you just do the standard delete with an X key, the, any connections that were in between those nodes are gone, right? So you kind of look at this and you're like, okay, what was this connected to again? I can't remember, you know? So if we undo that, what Node Wrangler has is Control X. So you use that to delete them and you can see that this connection here is maintained. So let's watch that again. So you want to get rid of, you know, you've got your noise texture here. You want to get rid of this color ramp. You can see it's hooked into the factor thing here through the color ramp. If you control X, that connection there is maintained. This last Node Wrangler shortcut is one that I wish other software had. This is so uh, useful. What it is, is control shift and click on a node. How you use it is you pick any node in your node tree here and you can control shift, click on that node and it will show the effects of just this node in the viewport. So this is great for debugging shaders. It also works in the compositor. Um, so for instance, you want to edit just this noise. You know, you can click on that one. You'll notice that it's gone into the color mode. If you want to see the black and white factor, you just shift click it again. And then you've got the factor here. You want to see what the color ramp looks like. You can click this here and then you can just tweak things. And it's all, you know, thanks to Eevee, it's all real time. To disable it, you just need to control shift click on your actual sh surface shader and it'll disconnect it. It also works in compositing here. You can shift click here at any point in your compositing and any viewer that you have set up as viewer node here, like this one on the left, you just do a drop down here, set it to viewer node, and then anywhere you shift click, that viewer node will show up right in here. And last but not least, I'll give you a shortcut key for when you couldn't be bothered having a shortcut key. What I generally use it for is you might be working away doing something repetitive um, and you're like, oh, I wish I knew the shortcut key for this or I wish there was a shortcut key for this particular function. Um, what you can do rather than having to like stop what you're doing, go find the shortcut key and assign it, uh, you can use this thing called quick favorites. If you push the Q key, you'll see this uh, pop up here and it says no menu items found. But what you can do is it says right click on buttons and add them to this menu. So one I use often that I haven't been bothered to try and make a shortcut key for is this lock camera to view. So to add this to the quick favorites, you just right click it, add to quick favorites, select that. And then you can just push N to get rid of that menu. And then when you push Q, you have this lock camera to view is in the menu. So say we're actually in the camera. So let's hit that old back tick key view camera. If you pan off this, you're, you're dropped out of the camera view as usual. But if you want to actually control the camera with this view, you push Q now, lock camera to view, 
and now you've got the locked camera. Maybe you find you're turning this overlays thing on and off all the time. And there might even be a shortcut key for this already, I don't even know. But what you could do is just go right click, add to quick favorites, and then you've got it right here under your mouse. All right, and that's it for shortcuts. I just wanted to take this opportunity to uh, thank everyone for all the uh, kind words and great response that uh, I've been getting so far on the tutorials in the channel. Um, I've definitely got some more long form tutorials coming along, um, but as you can imagine, they take a little while to kind of, you know, research and develop and all that kind of stuff. So they will be coming out soon. Um, in the meantime, I want to do a couple more of these kind of short form sort of videos as well. So I'm not just releasing a video once every three months or something. Um, but yeah, thanks again so much. Uh, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and I'll catch you all in the next video.